Hi, I'm Scott and welcome to the last video in our little chest modeling series here. So today we're just going to go over the exporting of this. So a few things that we want to do on export. If you're modeling and you're handing your work over to someone who's doing level layouts in a game engine, say, and you're not building that, you're not placing the objects in the scenes of your game, you're going to want things to all be facing in a similar direction so that everything works the same way, everything's placed the same way, and then everything can be edited the same way. So to do that, we're going to make all our objects run positively on the X direction. So we're going to hit E, and using the J key while we're in rotate, we can do snapped rotations, and we're just going to rotate this until it's facing straight down the X axis. So let's check that. If we're going to W, and we move our camera around, the red arrow is the positive X. We can also check that down the bottom here. So the front of our object, the lock, is pointing the same way as this little red X in the bottom corner here, which means that this is facing positively on the X direction. We want to go now and we want to lock that in. So we want to make this the default position for our object. So we're going to go up and we're going to do modify and we're going to do freeze transformations, which is going to set everything in the attribute editor back to zero. So if I click control Z and undo that freeze, we can see that there's a translate, a rotate and some scales being applied here. When we do modify and freeze, it resets the current object state to the zeros and the one scale for everything. So that's it back to normal now. The next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to export our UV layout. So we're going to do the UV and click UV Editor. And I'm just going to pull this in. So this is the same as going into our workspaces, but it just brings it up in its own tab. Now we want to do Image, and we want to go down to UV Snapshot. But before we do that, we're going to go to UV Shell, we're going to select them all, and we're going to just check some of these UV selections up here. So this here, this first one is going to just show us the bare bones UV. If we go into the little green squares one, we want everything to be blue. If any faces are red, what we want to do is, if we press Q, we want to select them and we go modify and flip. So this is red now, which basically means that the way the UVs are being read is back to front. We don't want that on any faces, so we'll just flip that back. So this is just checking that there's no issues with our work. If we turn that off, or we turn the next one on and click back to here, this is UV distortion. So we want everything to be white. If it's not white, or as close to white as possible, it means that the face is being stretched. So everything here is fine, there's a little tiny hint of blue but it's nothing major. What we just don't want is red. Then after that we can turn this off and now we can export our UV snapshot. So we want to select all of our shells for this, image and UV snapshot. Now this is going to bring up this little snapshot option. So what this is doing is it's turning the UVs into a texture sheet that you can work on in Photoshop. So I've already set up where I want my file to go and what I want it to be called. You want to change the image format from a Maya IFF to a PNG image. You can set your texture size so a good standard is to work in 2048 and then if you find when you're putting things into engine that your game's starting to get slow because your textures are too big, you can compress your textures down later. But starting in 2K is a good way to go. Your edge color will change the coloring on the edges, obviously. You want to leave this as UV1 and 1, and then you want to hit Apply and Close. So that's converted that into an image now that's stored exactly where I want it, that I can then open in Photoshop, and I can then texture on top of, and then export back in as a texture sheet. So we'll close that now. I want to come back to object mode, and we're just going to delete the history from what we just did there for that flip operation. We've froze our transformations. 
we're going to hit W and go to D. So our object is tilting on its center at the base, which is exactly where we want it to be doing that. So we've checked that. And now we want to go to File, and we want to go down to our Export. But before we do that, we want to open up, <coughs> pardon me, our content. Nope, not the content browser. We want to go to General Editors and, oh, where is it? the outliner here, sorry. We want to go Windows and then go down to Outliner. So if we open the outliner we get this little side menu here. So this pcube one is the mesh name. We want to change that. We want to double click on this and we want to call it chest underscore one. Never use spaces, always use an underscore. So we've changed that in here and we'll just double check that we've deleted our history we'll just refreeze our transformations we'll save the scene and then we'll go down to export selection so we don't want to do export all because in here we have all these little cameras so there's perspective top, front, side, left and then there's two sets of lighting being applied to the object if we do export all our FBX file will pull all of this unnecessary camera and lighting objects through when we only want chest one to come through. So what we're going to do is we're going to do file export selection. So if we click on this and then I'm just going to set up where I want this to go. I'll pull this over. So I have a folder for my Maya files while I'm editing and then I open up my FBX folder and I'm going to name this using naming conventions. So it's a static mesh, it's not going to move, so I'm going to call it SM underscore chest for the object name and then 01. Now if this was going in a really big game you might name it for its location as well. So SM underscore chest but before the chest we're going to put garage and then chest. So when someone goes to put this into a level they go okay this mesh doesn't move it's for the garage area it is a chest and it's the first version of the chest there might be more so then we're going to do export selection and that's now stored as an FBX file that can be popped into a game engine no problem at all so I hope that this series has helped you in getting the basics of polymodeling down and that this has all been straightforward and easy enough and thank you for watching